let's say somebody like Aleister Crowley would be a Neo-Sethian. So is a Neo-Sethian by what he does, or can we say this is sort of a, a continuation or of, a, of an ideology going down throughout history? Uh, a bit of both, definitely both. Um, he was, uh, Crowley himself was, uh, I would consider him to be Neo-Sethian insofar as he brought about uh, a new age or welcomed the dawn of the new aeon uh, but I believe he did so in a way that was, in a sense, calendrically premature uh, by about 100 years. And if you look at, in the Book of Law, his own uh, explanation for the term Aeon, it is a period of about 2,000 years. But if you look at the dates he gives for the speculated past Aeons, uh, they don't correspond with that measurement. So if you take just the measurement itself of an aeon and you apply it back, then you have 2,000 years before the present, uh, the time of Jesus, uh, 2,000 years before that, roughly the time of uh, David and Solomon and Moses, uh, 2,000 years before that, perhaps Abraham or Noah, uh, that era, and 2,000 years before that, you would have the uh, beginning of the universe according to the uh, biblical literalists. So uh, each eon, supposedly there is a world savior archetype that manifests itself. And at the present, uh, or rather uh, 2000 years ago, there was a group of Gnostics called the Sethites. And their main belief was in uh, the second coming of Seth, at the time, who was the uh, third son of Adam and Eve, and the firstborn uh, mortal human who had both uh, wisdom from having inherited the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, as well as uh, was mortal and lacked the uh, tree of immortality uh, from the tree of life, or the fruit of immortality from the tree of life. Um, so they believed in the Gnostic era that uh, Seth would resurrect or reappear or reincarnate. And when they saw Jesus, they were the earliest, some of the earliest converts to what we call today Christianity, uh, because they became some of his closest followers, apostles and disciples. So now, uh, 2000 years after that, or an aeon after that, uh, we have uh, Alistair Crowley attempting to explain to people that we were about to enter this, this new aeon, this new age of uh, vast changes to our society in the same sense as had happened with uh, Jesus and uh, even Muhammad some, I think, 400 years later. Uh, the early era of the last aeon was highly contentious. And Crowley was essentially attempting to say we were entering into that phase, uh, the equinox of the gods and, and so forth, when the aeon, one aeon changed over to another. And this is part of a calendrical uh, a cycle, a natural cycle measured by the, the calendar. Uh, and if one uses aeons instead of months on a base 12 calendar, uh, one can use this structure to measure even the ice age cycles. So to a certain extent, this uh, process or this cyclical, uh, every aeon, there's a world savior type figure that manifests and uh, exists uh, is theoretically part of a naturally occurring cycle that also involves space weather, uh, the peak of the sunspot cycle, uh, the entrance of a plasma sheet in the galactic uh, orbit of the Earth and the Sun around the galactic core, uh, as well as increased asteroids, um, even possibly an electromagnetic pole reversal, uh, possible crustal displacement, all of these sorts of things that uh, we've had people talking about, uh, quote unquote, disaster theorists talking about. Uh, for the last hundred years or so as part of entry into this new age. Uh, I would say Crowley was uh, attempting to, and I keep using the phrase attempting to, but uh, 
I'm not sure how to what extent he's really succeeded, but uh, I would say that definitely he was one of the people who was trying to uh, bring awareness to this uh, this process.